I mixed up a, um, a mixture of quinacridone gold and some alizarin crimson here uh, to give a kind of uh, colour for the, um, the brickwork that I'm going to use on the, um, the, the building. So uh, let's get started on that. I just have to remember to cut around that sign there um, and I'll keep a handy bit of paper in case I mess up because uh, in the world of watercolour you can easily mess up and the roof's going to go on like afterwards. It doesn't matter if I go over the um, drain pipe thing here either because um, that's going to be darker and we're painting from light to dark. Everything down here. Across the top of the sign here, and then down to the boat, which um, isn't too critical because we've Mast it out there, keep going here. And uh, some of this is going to have all kinds of foliage all over it, so um, don't have to be too worried about this. I'm just going to stop here for the riverbank line or whatever it is, some sort of jetty. Get that straight there. And then that's going to dry and um, actually it's getting slightly lighter as I use the uh, paint. So I'm just going to lighten it very slightly because um, this face of it is in the sunshine. So I'm just going to bash this in now. Just have to be careful as I get up to the edge here. I don't want to get a sort of bleed into the paper that's wet. Bring this down. And I've forgotten about the um the window here so I'm just gonna take that off and then go around it. across the top of the roof here, that's actually masked so it's fairly safe. Not that watercolour is dangerous or anything, but uh, sometimes it can be a bit bad for your health when it goes wrong, which it does frequently. This one just pulling out these windows here. Oh, that is actually masked there. I thought it wasn't masked. That's going to dry now. And then the roof has got some snow areas that are um, masked out and I've got to work out a, a kind of darker area for that, darker colour. So let's have a look. We do. I would go for uh, some kind of brown. I'm going into some French ultramarine here. 
mix a bit more. You always find that you're glad if you've mixed slightly more um, than you think you needed because you can then go back and say, oh, I could do with some roof colour or um, I could do with some shadow colour. And uh, unless you can mix it exactly the same as you mixed it before, um, then um, you should have enough of a mixture, basically. Just going to try this out on my pre-drawing that I did. Going to want a bit of tonal contrast with the the sky and also with the snow that's got, going to be on the roof so let's see just going to test the um the wetness of the paper and this, sh this should just about be okay just put my hand on on this in there. Just being slightly careful down that edge there. A bit more of it here. darken it a little bit again because we need it to kind of pop with the contrast against the sky and I've gone a little bit far over the drain pipe so what you can do in that case is just get get a straight bit of paper and if you want you can tidy it up don't want to you can just ignore it because um that's going to be a probably a dark color along there just going to drop some more in here Okay, wash my brush and um, leave that to dry whilst I have a think about my next move. I want to deal with this area of foliage around here and um, just been mixing up a combination of um, burnt umber and um, French ultramarine trying to um, work out what colour I'm going to use. I want it to be quite um, faded out and bluey brown in the distance so maybe something like this. Anyway it's not too controversial a colour um, I can always go back and uh, strengthen it up a bit if I have to. Don't need a lot of detail back here. What Bob Ross would say, you don't really care what's happening back here. Yeah, let's bring this up here around. Get that 
angle there and there. I may have to strengthen some of this up around the cabin of this, um, what's it called, a canal boat. But just for now I'm putting a basic wash in. Screw it down. It turns the corner. Going for a slight darker bit down there, just to give it a bit of variety. And maybe I'll mirror some of that round here. Yeah, that was just to strengthen up that contrast there. Now I'll decide what to do next. I want to introduce a little bit of a yellow colour. As we move along. I'm just kind of wetting around the edge there. And let's mix up some yellow to go at the top. We have the option to drop in the slightly darker hues at the bottom. And I'm also trying to think there's a bit of snow on this as well, so I don't want to kill it. By going too dark. And now for the next bit, I will Get a bit of green and maybe brown going. Let's have a look at that. let some of it bleed as we um, go around. That's a bit of snow there on, on top. This will be maybe lighter against there. So I've just faded some of it out with some water. And as I'm doing this, I'm just planning the next move each time because I'm reacting to the last colour that I put on. I think that I would like it to retain some yellow. Oh, yeah, a bit of that. 
Some of these are um, Daniel Smith watercolours. They're expensive, but some of them are brilliant. And this will go well actually with some Payne's Grey. Just for some of the darker stuff. Ooh, is that too much? Could be. Yep, yeah, scrap that colour. I'm going to stick on the brown side. With just a small bit of green. Just a bit like. I'm pre-wetting the, uh, the sponge. Squeeze almost all the water out. And I've got some of this lighter colour here, which I'm going to put around the tops of the bushes. as well, it doesn't really matter. A bit of masking to do there, just flip that off. Then with the same uh, sponge, I'm going to go in a bit darker. If you can see this. Oh, look at that. It seems to use an alarming amount of paint to do this. Have a quick check over here. Yeah, that'll be okay. It kind of fills in vast areas at a time. So you have to keep looking at it and thinking is this is this good is it right I might just vary it slightly with some green We have the option to go back in darker on this, which we might need to do. A bit of that stuff to use that up. And let's just mirror some of this over here. bit of dark here I'm just gonna see what that comes out as oh yeah like that just a few bits in here and there so it's got quite a brown palette to it this um, picture now I'm going to let all of that dry and then kind of plan what I'm doing next. I might just do some dabs on here as well because this is foreground stuff too. And the bits we don't like we can always knock it back slightly with just a bit of tissue paper if it looks too much. I'd say you can't fix watercolour easily, but you can if you plan it quite well.
Next I'm going to deal with the um, masking fluid that's in the uh, building's roof. So um, you can use a, um, a putty eraser to get rid of it but um, what I do is just have a quick feel. Is it dry? Yes. And then I just uh, scrape my finger over it like this. Sometimes you take off the masking fluid and you think, ah, I didn't even need to do it really, I didn't need to mask that bit. But uh, at the time you can be glad that you've done it. I'm going to leave the top of the boat masked for now and I need to leave that mask there um, for the... Uh, the sign because I'm going to paint that in some sort of blue. Cerulean blue is what I will use and I'm going to use this little brush. It's a sable of some sort, rowney sable. And so we've got the lettering area is kind of masked off still, and we're just going to paint right round it. Quick test, yeah, that'll be all right. So. There we go, that's that bit done. Dry my brush, give it a quick wash. These pots are just um, from some sort of chocolate pudding, I think they're called goo in the UK. Goo pots. So um, you can keep a few of those back and uh, they're quite good because they're not too deep. Um, if your brush is too deep in there um, and the water goes over the ferrule, then the brush can kind of split, uh, as you can see happened to this one before I knew about all that. I'm also going to um, demask, is that a word? Demask um, what's in the sky. I'm planning to use a thin uh, rigger brush to do some of this foliage in the sky. Some of this I will leave on and some of it I won't. It helps if you um, always like wash your hands really well when you're working with uh, watercolour uh, paper so that you don't put kind of grease prints on it because that can mess up your entire painting. Okay so that was some of that foliage. Now let's see what we can work on next. Um, I think that uh, I'm going to put in the red on the barge just along the side bit here. And the question is which red? This one is more of a cadmium red and I'm going to use that. I've not got much left of it actually. Look at that. This one really kind of pops out at you. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to leave this bit because I haven't quite decided what I'm doing there yet with it. So. Here we 
go. Don't fear it, just do it. I spend a lot of my time thinking about doing watercolour rather than actually doing it. I don't know about you, but I get a sort of mental block. Do I want to do it today? And I can sort of stare at the painting and it stares back at me saying, go on, what can go wrong? Just do it. There we go, along here. Join that up. This will probably be like the most eye-catching colour in the painting, so let's just clean that up there. Quick rinse. I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do on this doorway kind of area on this particular narrowboat. So um, I was actually planning to um, mask something and so I'm going to pause and uh, do a bit of research and get back to you. I was just having a little debate with myself about um, what to do here with um, the colouring. Um, so I'm going to do um, a dark purple around here and then have the same red um, that I used before um, on, on the inside. So I'm just going to pick up some more. Just check that. A bit more. Let's test it again. Here we go, that's good. I'm just going to leave a little gap all the way around as well. And then I've got to mix a, a kind of darker purple version based on the same uh, red. Just pick up a tiny bit of French ultramarine. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Just dampen that down slightly with some blue. Let's give that a test. Yeah, that's a nice one. Just got to make sure I don't go into that now. This isn't actually the colour of the boat in the uh, reference photo that I'm using. I'm just kind of inventing stuff. Just have to pick colours that go kind of well together, that uh, sit next to each other okay. And I'll probably use a couple of dots um, on here once it's all dried as well. Whilst I've got this blue here, I'm going to go in and do some of the dark aspects here of the um the kind of canopy hood thing that's on this boat Bring that down here. And one across the bottom. I might have a 
it's had too much mask on there. I might have to finish some of this um, without the masking on. Right, just down here. I want to do all the windows in one uh, go at some point, but I'm going to return to that uh, in a little bit. 